Hello and welcome back to another video. I was a little reluctant to make this video because I was sister scared that James would sister snap my career in half before it even began. But James Charles is constantly surrounded by drama and can't seem to catch a break and I wanted to see if he was deserving of it all. This is not a spilling tea video because I've already been told I'm crap at it. This is commentary. So for all the sisters here, don't sister squash me just yet. Now, drama has been unfolding the past couple of days and for those who need a refresher, makeup artist and aspiring vocalist James Charles announced a tour. The big emphasis of the tour was that James wanted to meet his fans and the tour is for the fans. Usually he would get backlash for not having a traditional talent, for example singing or dancing. Many laughed at the fact that people are going to see James sing Womp Womp and do makeup in front of a crowd. I think it's unfair to say that being an amazing makeup artist isn't a talent. It's a form of art that is easily brushed to the side. But I do get where people are coming from when they scoffed at what he would be doing on stage. The core of the backlash wasn't the content of the tour, it was the pricing. When money gets involved, everything seems to go to crap apparently. So the original pricing for the sisters VIP was of $500. And that was the main ticket that got a lot of heat. There was also the VIP Plus which is $250 and the normal VIP which was $99.50 and the show would last around 90 minutes and for those who don't really use dollars, $500 is about £383. After getting a lot of hate and criticism for the pricing, James slightly changed the prices and added more things to the packages. So the revisited $500 ticket which price did not change included a pre-show catered meet and greet and a picture with James Charles, a goodie bag worth $250 of stuff and a chance to be brought on stage, front row and first access to merch and a signed poster. Now everyone has pretty much spoken about the pricing and ripped it apart and the general consensus was that it was overpriced. However, as controversial as this may sound, I personally would not pay $500 to meet anyone. Well, other than Jojo Siwa. Oh, wait. Like, you put me in such an uncomfortable situation. Like, you know I'm not happy. The $500 package includes some decent things, with the goodie bag being worth $250 and a catered meal and a meeting group. And it doesn't really sound that bad. And apparently their VIP sold out, so it's not like people aren't buying it. I'm also not a tour manager and I don't know how much every little thing costs. One thing that I am against is in the $500 package, there isn't free merch. There's just priority to being able to buy more merch. And that is a little shady. We don't even know if his performance will be good. Maybe it'll be phenomenal and we're all very quick to judge and jump down people's throats, me included. I was also gobsmacked at the price, but then again, I'm not a massive fan that would pay to see him, so maybe the things in the package are worth it to his fans. A lot of his fans said that the people who were complaining were those who wouldn't have bought a ticket anyway and were finding any reason to tear James down. I would disagree with this point to an extent. I think James knew that the $500 ticket was a ripoff, to which he added more things to the package and he said he couldn't change the ticket price because the companies holding the event would not budge. So this led to many arguing that he doesn't have the correct team around him to think that having a $500 ticket is acceptable. A ton of commentary channels had a lot to say and many of them criticised him for it. No. Yeah. It cost $47 for the ingredients of this? Yeah. You are kidding. Oh my god! $47?! Not worth it in any way. No! And this is not worth it in any way, shape, and or form. For the time, nor the money. You're buying a ticket, an overpriced ticket at that, for a tour, without actually knowing what the tour is about. Still a very high price and I still would not pay it. And to be honest, I, I wouldn't really recommend putting the prices up there. And I would say maybe just lower it to like, $200 just to, just to cool the air. And then there was a commentary video that actually sided with James. He did not agree with the price, but was annoyed at the fact that people were comparing the price that James was charging to musicians. He's a celebrity now. I think he's allowed to charge premium prices for his show. I reckon the show will be fine. I reckon it'll be a good show. I, these are expensive, which is something that I also think people don't know. This was an interesting video to watch since he took a different approach to everyone else. To which I found out he's actually friends with James, but James had unfollowed him. And a lot of the comments said Alex was just trying to get followed by James again. Honestly, sister savvy. Ew. 
I think the most important part of this whole scandal is James's reaction, which was to block people if they said anything against him. He even blocked Stephen Tries. You're gonna hop then? Oh. Hey! Oh. Blocking people makes James look stubborn and immature. He claims he's a businessman but then can't take criticism. It's like customer service, you have to listen to complaints and change the service accordingly. James is known for blocking people and usually I'd be like Yes, queen! Because who needs that negative energy, right? But as someone who has multiple businesses, criticism is important and a lot of people that he blocked were either being constructive or just making a joke of the situation. It goes to show that these comments obviously struck a chord with James. The main argument for the inflated ticket prices was that he had to pay a massive team, to which people argued that there are plenty of tours going on from celebrities where VIP is not that expensive. Boy, if you don't get and apparently Jake Paul's tickets are priced at a thousand dollars, but the moment we start comparing ourselves to Jake Paul, something has truly gone wrong in the world. Also, has anyone else noticed the clout relationship forming between him and Tana Mojo? Can't wait for that one to blow up. And we're back on savage mode. And we're back. I think this is the start of the savagery. I agree. I think we both needed like each other to bring that out of each other. No, God, please, no, no. After hearing all of this, what do you think about the ticket prices? But that wasn't the end of it for James Charles. He was called out for calling out a guy that was toying with his feelings. James confessed how a guy he liked told him he was bi, then he had an intimate moment with him, but in fact that guy was just using him for money and flights and wasted his time. Usually that would be it and we would move on, but then the mysterious guy came out with a video and debunked James's claims. Man, 2019, you really just can't say anything and get away with it. You must reap the repercussions. James then saw this as an opportunity to manipulate me as a person who may or may not have been trying to figure things out about their sexuality after the fact of telling him that I was straight multiple times. He then started to begin putting a little bit of pressure on me. As you all know, this person 99.9, .9, maybe even 100% of the time, goes after um, heterosexual men. I told James I wasn't interested in any of that. He then proceeded to get mad at me for not clearing my schedule to meet up. James has said on numerous occasions that he likes straight guys, which doesn't really make sense. If you know someone isn't attracted to you because of something they can't change, then why would you want them to switch to your side? I think that because James is presenting himself as someone who is hopeless with love is being given a slide for this. Even if he isn't pressuring the guy, it's just strange. Why would you be into someone who wouldn't otherwise like you other than the thrill of a challenge? But there's also the tea of the um, Ferris wheel, but I'm not going to go into that because I'll just get demonetized. <laughs> However, we still don't know his full side, so I'm still not going to judge. I also don't want people to leave this video thinking James is a terrible person. I do think he is someone who's made bad business moves, and I understand there are contracts in place that can't be changed dramatically, which is fair enough. But maybe next time have some focus groups or market research on ticket prices, or you know what would be even better? A poll on Twitter. A lot of people like to dispute all criticism of a YouTuber when they say he's a 19 year old businessman who's accomplished. But you can go to the moon and still face criticism. Nobody's perfect, but you must learn. Literally in my last video I said constructive criticism is not hate. Stop blocking people and see what people are saying. James's reaction to everything that has gone down is kind of melancholic. He stopped posting on Instagram for a while. Wow, did I just say not posting on Instagram is melancholic? Social media is really taking over. He has also been posting kind of sad things. I'm sure people won't like me saying this, but I think James goes into things with the right intention and sometimes it just doesn't work out. He's changed the climate of the beauty community and I'm personally not even into makeup videos and his videos are kind of entertaining sometimes. Typically, I don't care for beauty drama or drama in general because drama is 90% planned Scandals help the creators because their names are circulated over social media and they get more exposure. It's like the term, there's no such thing as bad publicity. James is still thriving and opening up Morphe stores all over the world. Anyway, I think I'm going to end the video here. Thank you ever so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. 
I'm going to put my Twitter and Instagram up here. And let's have a discussion in the comment section. What do you think of everything? And yeah, have a great day.